Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, and welcome to another edition of Let's Argue, where I jump online, I look at your hot takes, your unpopular opinions, your tough questions, I respond to the best ones. Also, I'm sure with this shirt, it's gonna make a, a green screening this and editing this a nightmare, so have fun. Isaiah Rashad's Scissors and Kendrick Lamar's forthcoming projects will make or break TDE going into this decade. They have to go three for three. <laughs> the rest of their roster has already come and gone and their newer artists aren't enough to keep the label alive. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, th I think TDE is in, in uh, a bit of a rock and a hard place here. They have to go hard with these next three major projects. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to say, like, if they're all bad or mediocre, will it erase the impact of the label and the artists on it and their major projects? Of course not. Having said that, like if the Isaiah Rashad project, the Kendrick project, and the SZA projects are like not good, what the hell is anybody going to have to look forward to from the TDE camp for the next three years? Like literally nothing. Schoolboy shot his shot and it was not great. Absol is... Hello, hello, hi. I mean, even if Absol did come through with a great project out of the blue, um, I feel like a lot of the younger fans out there, the younger hip hop fans right now, probably wouldn't see the hype in it because his popularity is just like so distant at this point. You know, he just had so much momentum in the early point of the 2010s, and much of that has dissipated with one so-so project after another. And J-Rock, for as talented as he is, I feel like he's in very much the, the same boat. It's really coming down to these three key projects that are gonna be released in a pretty quick succession, I imagine, in the next year or so. So, I mean, a, a lot banking on these records with TDE in the near future. The label underclass right now beneath Isaiah Rashad is not looking great at the moment. Even if these next three projects with SZA, Rashad, and Kendrick are great, uh, we're, we're still looking at a pretty wide period of time before they're dropping again. And in that span of time, what, what are we gonna be listening to from TDE. I think even if the label is gonna stay relevant, uh, they don't just need these three projects to be good. They need to sign a game changer, another game changer, that's gonna take the label into this new decade, uh, or at least like the next three to five years with a couple of promising projects. And uh, who, who is that gonna be? Uh, I don't know. You know, the, does the label even care to do that sort of thing at this point, or are they just going to hunker down on who they've had success with in the past? I mean, they've shown interest in signing new artists, uh, that's for sure, but uh, the new artists have not shown the promise of uh, a Kendrick or a schoolboy as of right now. So I guess we're gonna see. Tool released an album with art that transforms their name into a medical syringe. It contains references to inoculations, breath, breathing, fear, hysteria, human nature, extinction, and passage of time. Released before COVID, it has aged incredibly and deserves another listen. Maybe, okay, I, I, I guess. I, I personally, I prefer a tool that's in the shape of the wrench with the balls. Uh, where it looks like a dick. Syringe tool? <laughs> Big wrench dick tool? <sighs> T-Pain's rant about being identical to one another is kind of ironic considering he's not looking further than just the rappers he mentioned. If you're just looking at what's popular, of course you'll find clones. I, I think uh, a lot of the context around T-Pain's rant is being ignored. And uh, I mean, his rant is funny. I love the energy behind it, as a lot of people <laughs> probably do. We have all the shit that you're doing. We already have it. Lil Uzi Vert is already doing it. Lil Baby is already doing it. The Baby is already doing it. It's literally two niggas with baby in their names that's already doing all the music you want. Do something else! But I don't think he's merely just like trying to throw Lil Baby or the Baby or any Baby or any Lil specifically who is seeing success right now under the bus. I think what he's trying to encourage up and coming artists to do is just like rethink their approach. I don't think he uh, uh, dislikes the fact that Lil Yachty is popular or that anybody is popular and, and doing well in hip hop at the moment, even if they have a trendy sound. I think what he's doing is encouraging up and comers 
to if you're going to try to make it in music and make it in the industry, so on and so forth, make sure that your approach is not, I'm gonna sound like fucking Lil Baby. I'm gonna sound like Da Baby. I'm gonna sound like this artist and that artist that already has a super established hype sound right now. And while that's not necessarily a bad way to come up, a bad way to succeed, I mean, Lil Baby himself uh, sounded quite a bit like his contemporaries when he was rising and in popularity and then sort of like went on to define a clear sound for himself down the road. But I think uh, in many cases, it can be a sure bet that you will stand out if you're not consciously trying to just hop on somebody else's wave. And I think that's all he was really saying and doing. I think he just wanted to remind younger and up and coming artists that uh, uh, they should worry more about sounding like themselves as opposed to sounding like some other artist that's uh, going platinum right now that they really like or you know a, a hit song that they really enjoy. Vapor isn't a genre no matter what RYM says. It's just vaporwave. People will say vapor because saying vaporwave over and over again gets redundant after a while. Is that what people are saying? I mean, honestly, uh, I'm, I'm not so much sure about like the linguistic shift toward vapor that you may be referring to here, but prior to this tweet, I had no idea that RYM YM was just labeling the whole thing as vapor. I went and I looked and Jesus Christ, it's, it's true. And I have no fucking idea why. Who is like coming up with this genre tree? I mean, for as long as I've been aware of Macintosh Plus and freaking uh, 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 one of six point nevers contributions to this style and and everything that was like coming out of the dream catalog like early discography era it, it was like all referred to as vaporwave and it was like celebrated that uh, there were so many different cool variants of the genre and while you know there have been sort of like substrains of vaporwave for a while i i, I never really heard anybody calling it like, oh, well, it's vapor, and then there's vapor wave, and there's all these other different kind of like uh, uh, subversions of it. Like, ugh. it sort of seems a historical and almost like revisionist to be going back and being like, okay, wait, it's just vapor now. You know, even stripping out the wave and just calling it vapor almost removes it of its context and influence from the rise of chill wave that came before it. And, uh, you know, almost like the part of online culture that that was born out of. Spelling is a better with sound production than a singer. Most of the tracks on her new album make some really compelling places to go, but her singing never really meets the level of the song's quality. It's more like another presence within each song. I don't agree or entirely get it. I think the singing is very theatrical and immaculate and uh, the range is there the vocals are quite expressive and uh, loaded with personality i think the vibrato is uh, quite nice i put this album on and instantly i'm just like fucking walking into narnia that's just the vibe I get, and the vocals are a part of that vibe. The search for a decent place to discuss music has led me only from echo chamber to slightly more up their own ass echo chamber. I am yearning for an unobtainable utopia, one forever pushed away from grasp by the nature of online discussion, or does such a place actually exist? Yes, my good friend, a place does exist, and it's called... The, the TND Discord accessible through our Patreon, yes. Uh, it's <laughs> Link down below, join up today. Ending a song in a fade out is not inherently a bad thing, and in some cases it actually serves the song quite well depending on the style. Also, pl plug your bass. Plug my bass, like, like promotionally. promotionally. Either way, I, I I agree. I mean, look, I think some fade outs are quite bad and can really ruin the momentum of a song's back end. And sometimes I think like a hard finish is a bit more fitting. But look, I do love a good fade when maybe what happens is you get like a great transition into a speed up or a build up or a tempo change or something, or maybe a cool like unexpected solo from an instrument that wasn't there prior in the mix or something. And then on that, it begins to fade out. You know, those types of fade outs I think can be very tasteful and very nice. 
Uh, but generally, you know, I, I think uh, there, there are a lot of uh, lazy fade outs out there. I think I'm going to leave it at that for this episode of Let's Argue. Thank you very much for watching. You're the best. I love you. Mwah. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, uh, music, uh, Let's Argue, uh, forever.